Hi everybody, this time I will talk about full automatic photogrammetry with small aircrafts like the Mavic Mini. A small aircraft like the Mavic Mini can only make missions in virtual stick mode. So here you can see a grid who was calculated full automatic with a ground station and where we can see also with the camera file on Google Earth how the mission works. So we can see we have two 3D spheres and one flat mission on the schoolhouse. That's the final result from this shooting made with the Mavic Mini. So it's quite a good result what we can get from a small aircraft. Now let's see how we can fly a virtual stick mission with this small aircraft. I built a special SDK414 virtual stick simulator to do all the testings where I can change parameters. And here you can see my CSV files who I prepared with my ground station. And now we will see how the small aircraft will fly this mission. In this simulator I have two possibilities. I can work with virtual stick for the Mavic Mini, for example, but I can also work with multiple DJI mission with the same uh, system. So I will accelerate the rest of this shooting. You can see the blue um, trigger bar. That's my system to trigger the distance between two photos and I can also measure the full distance with this method. So I use for the virtual stick mission and for the DJI mutable mission this system that I trigger the distance. If I reach the, the distance, the photo is taken. That gives us the advantage that we can use A, B, photo or other systems what was not possible before in the mutable DJI mission. Something that is very important if you use the Mavic Mini for virtual stick missions like this, that you calibrate the compass before you fly. We will see later in this video with the ground station how we can make missions like that. You can see that my pitch angle is not minus 90 degrees, it's minus 70 degrees. We get the better results for high buildings with this method. For this mission I use the trigger distance for 12 meters to trigger the photos. And you can also see on the total distance it's about 1.6 km actually. That this is an advantage to use your own trigger system. In the DJI mutable mission you can only set a trigger for distance between two waypoints, not for a whole waypoint mission. As this is a simulator I have different angles on the top on the view so I can verify my shootings and also the settings from the aircraft. Now let's see how we can fly a semi-sphere 3D mission. It's only four waypoints in the ground station for virtual stick and DJI multiple mission in my system. And now you can see how the Mavic Air flies a circle around a point of interest. I repeat, I use only four waypoints for a mission like this and all the rest is done with the trigger with, for the photos. I overlap the circle on this simulator to see how precise an aircraft is flying a circle. So there are also small differences between virtual stick missions who are controlled uh, 20 times or 25 times per second or DJI multiple mission who are a little bit simplified. Here you can see the system. We fly around the waypoint. We check the distance, the radius for the aircraft, the speed. To correct 25 times per second the position of the aircraft. You can see that even with a Mavic Mini you can fly very precise emission. 
So the, the big advantage of the sphere mission is that we have always the same distance to the target. That's for photogrammetry calculation an advantage that we have always the same distance. The first circle was about 15 meter altitude. Actually we are at 84 meter altitude and now we will change the altitude again but uh, the aircraft will always have the same distance to the target. So the whole mission is full automatic. We have only to charge the CSV file and we will say, see later in the map creator how we can create it. Now we will do another 3D mission. I cannot have the whole place with one 3D mission, so I programmed two circles. And that's now the second circle sphere mission. I did this shooting during the weekend on the school place. So the sunlight, it's not very good for a shooting like this, but the result is quite amazing. Best shooting time is always if you have not direct sunlight with shadows. So you have all the faces from the building with the same light. But for demonstration, that's quite a good example to show how it works. You make not a lot of noise with an aircraft like the Mavic Mini. That's another advantage to use a small aircraft for photogrammetry in a village or a town. With about 30 minutes flight time with the Mavic Mini, we can do several missions. Now I will show you on an image how it works. This orbit caption with a half sphere. So we have always the same distance to the target. And that's very good for the algorithm to calculate the 3D image. We can also simulate on Google Earth our shooting. And if we verify the positions on the final calculation, we see that all is very precise. Now let's go in a new program, an app, who works on Mac OS and iOS. Here you can see the Mac OS version. I built a mission creator where we can create 3D missions, 2D missions, and we can also make inceptions and panorama positions. This app works also on iOS, so it's an advantage if you have to do a mission on the place. Now we will save the CSV file. So it's very easy, with two clicks you have made a 3D sphere mission. Now let's do the other mission on the same place, also a semi-sphere. And we will save it in the iCloud. The advantage of the iCloud is that you have full access on your files from any computer and that's now very easy to use in the new iOS buildings. So we have not to use a server to upload the missions. We can work with simple CSV files who everybody can edit. And I use the same CSV format like Litchi. So it's possible to re-import the grid into the Litchi. If you like to or prefer to work with Litchi, you can do it and you can use it. So we can add waypoints, we can move waypoints. It's very easy to use and we can move the grid. We can change the trigger size for the images. And if we import all that in Litchi, you have also the trigger points. But it's clear this flight hub is primarily made for my own apps like HDR Pano. In the top of the view, you can also see the maximum distance, 
how many pictures. So that's also an advantage to see. And you can change the altitude for the whole mission. So the iCloud is very useful to handle all these files and to edit it for other purpose. So to use the iCloud is a big advantage to exchange all these files and you can also save the KML file for Google Earth on the, in the iCloud. It's also possible that you prepare the mission before in Leechy. Just to check the outlines, you can import that into the map creator, create the grid and then re-import the grid into Leechy. CSV is an open format from Excel, so it's very easy to edit these files. Here you can see how I re-imported the grid mission into Lychee and you can see that we have the 70 degrees, we have the trigger distance, so it's all in there. Then you can use the KMA file to simulate the place and as you can see here the positions for a Mavic Mini in the virtual stick are very very precise. Let's see how it looks, a CSV file for the whole mission as I use only the waypoints in the edges it's only a few waypoints and for the 3D mission we have only about four waypoints to use it. So it's quite amazing what you can do with a small aircraft. Actually there are not so many apps who support virtual stake missions but uh, I'm sure that more will come. Actually, we have DroneLink, HDR Parno, and Lychee has also planned to support virtual stick missions. I hope you liked this video. Until the next time, thanks for watching.